Hey guys, how's it going? Jason's here. Today's topic will be something about virtual private network on our Azure's PBX. Yes, the VPN server app. As we know, virtual private network allows us to traverse networks privately and securely as if we were on a private network. The VPN server application on Yangstar Azure's PBX will help to configure the PBX as a VPN server. We can set up multiple VPN clients to access the server safely and securely. With VPN server in Azure's PBX, we can host our own virtual private network. We can have privacy internet tunnel with authorized encryption. It helps to connect remote offices and mobile workers securely. All right, enough talk about functions of the VPN application on Azure's PBX. Now, let's turn to the configuration part. Azure's PBX supports OpenVPN, so we will set our PBX as OpenVPN server or client, and set other terminals like computers or IP phones as OpenVPN clients. Generally speaking, there are two main steps to configure VPN. First, Set up certificates and keys for OpenVPN server and multiple clients. Second, configure the OpenVPN server and clients with certificates and keys generated. In this video, we will set an S300 as OpenVPN server and an S100 as OpenVPN client. Now, let's jump in and check it out. The first step is to create certificates and keys for the server and client with OpenVPN. Install the software on the computer. During the installation process, remember to check and install these two components. And do memorize your install location. This piece of information will be used in our following configurations. Here, we will install it in this folder in D disk. After the successful installation, we can start creating certificates and keys. For different terminals, we will need different files. These are files required for S300 and S100. Now, let's get started. First, customize variables in this file. Usually, we set the key size to 1024 or 2048. Change it according to your needs. Here we keep the default value. You can also change these variables. The registration information to be applied in certificates and keys. Second, initialize the PKI, public key infrastructure. Open command prompt window. Enter this path and execute these commands, which have different functions. Now we can start creating keys. First, build root certificate authority certificate and key. Execute this command and enter the registration information. In the beginning, we've set the variables, so set a unique common name. Second, generate the certificate and key for the server. Execute the command. Specify the name. Agree to sign the certificate and commit the request. Third, generate certificate and key for client S100, following the same steps. Fourth, generate DeFi Hellman parameters, a kind of security protocol, by executing this command. Last step, generate TA key. This key is optional. If you want to enable TLS authentication to defend your PBX against malicious attacks, then you need to upload this key to the PBX and clients. Now, we've got all the certificates and keys listed. Alright, next, let's move on to the second main step. First, set up OpenVPN server on Azure's PBX and forward the server port on the router. Go to the App Center, install VPN server. Then, enable the server and set the following parameters. Here, compression refers to link compression for tunnel data stream. If it's enabled, we also need to enable it on the client. Ensuring successful communication between the server and the client. Next, customize the protocol. 
device mode and encryption method. Make sure the settings in the client are consistent with the servers. Global traffic forwarding, if enabled. Set DNS and all traffic such as web browsing and DNS lookups from the clients will go through the VPN server. The key length is 1024 or 2408. Set the value according to your settings in this file. We've set it to 1024, so we choose it here. And last, set the maximum number of clients to connect to the server in the verification mode. We have three modes available. The first mode is recommended. The server will verify CA certificate and client certificate of the client. We simply keep all the default settings here. Next, upload the required certificates and keys to the PBX. If you don't want to enable TLS authentication on the PBX, a key is not required to be uploaded. Besides, the setting of TLS on the client should be the same as the server setting. Confirm and save the configurations and we can see the VPN server status shows running. We can also go to the resource monitor to check the VPN server status and the private IP address. Last step, remember to forward the server port on the router connected to the PBX. Say we have forwarded the server port 1194 to 5078 and the static public IP address of the router is 110.56.86.60. Memorize the information for we need to enter it in the client. Now we've finished the server settings. Let's turn to the client S100. Go to the network setting page. We can find OpenVPN here. Enable OpenVPN and finish the settings below. Choose Manual Configuration, then enter the public IP address of the VPN server. Set these parameters the same as those in the server. Here, we leave username and password empty because the server will only verify CA certificate and client certificate. Then, upload the certificates and keys to the client. Confirm and save the configuration and go to Resource Monitor to check the VPN network status and IP address. Now, the server and client has been connected. That's basically how to set Azure's PBX as VPN server and client. If you want to learn more about the client settings of your computer and your IP phone, please check our articles in Knowledge Base page on our website or the configuration guide of the VPN application. Alright guys, now that was all for the VPN server configuration. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you're not already. Leave your comment if you want more updates. I will see you guys in the next one.